you're trading a master account or your personal trading account and you want to trade to say a company account or another MT5 or MT4 platform, or perhaps you're going for a prop firm challenge like FTMO and you want to send trades from one account and send all those trades over to the other accounts on autopilot, I'm going to take you through that process. Now I used to use an MQL5 based program that I purchased. It's no longer available and I'm going back to the old tried and true FX Blue trade copier. Just a quick run through on the differences between the personal trade copier and the trade mirror. The trade mirror runs over the internet so it can be a little bit slow if your trades are requiring high speed or changing the stop losses quite quickly and that kind of thing. You don't want to be left in the lurch and cop a lot of slippage and that kind of thing. The personal trade copier is the best option in terms of trading from one platform to another on the same computer. So I'm going to basically just show you the process of that. You can run a download, either the MT5 or MT4 version, and click to download. And once that downloads, it's going to pick up most of the MT5 platforms that you have, and you can simply select the ones you want to install a personal trade copier on, and then install it. Once you've done that, I'm actually set up in a VPS. And what you can do is head on over to both your platforms. I'm setting up the trade copier sender from my master account, which is running a range of algorithms and personal manual trades as well. All I do is right click in the navigator and then click refresh if it's not already there. But you can see here the FX Blue trade copy receiver and also the sender. So you drag and drop that into the chart. I'm just going to say yes. If you've got dependencies, you do need the allow DLL imports ticked. If you've got imports, it's just set to trade copy and you can do a whole range of features here. Probably the most important ones from a basic level is the lot size. For the sender, it's just sending the exact same lot size that I put in here. And what we'll do on the receiver is actually adjust that from that side. Symbol multipliers, so if you've got more confidence in particular symbols, you could multiply by that. And one thing I'm also going to cover is the symbol mapping. Now it's not on the sender, it's actually on the receiver, so we'll cover that shortly. But you can see here, there's a suffix after the actual symbol that's going to affect what the receiver sends. So it's going to receive this exact symbol with the dot A, and I need it over here to remove that. So I'm going to show you how to do that as well. On the receiving account, we're just going to drop in the receiver. Allow DLL is on. We'll check the common. It's got to be set to allow algo trading as well. Now the inputs, this is the important bit. We've got custom symbol mappings. The way to do that is basically line up AUDUSD.A, for example, and then that will equal what the receiver is actually meant to take that as. So AUDUSD.A will then become AUDUSD, removing that final prefix. What I've done is I've got my algorithm set up and I had a whole range of symbols over here, but what I did was right click, hide all, and it removed any charts that I wasn't actually using. And that told me that all of the symbols in here were the symbols that had a chart open and therefore an algorithm was running on it. So I typed out these symbols. So we've got sender and receiver. I typed these out and then ran an equal sign and then AUDUSD. I believe these are separated by a comma. So I can just type a comma in here, remove that last one, and I should be able to copy and paste this into a notepad to remove any formatting. And I'm just going to delete the extra spacing using the arrow key and the delete key just to run down through each section where there's additional spacing. And then finally, I'm going to delete the space so it's all on one line. And I'm going to copy and paste. One thing you do need to be careful of is the lot sizing can be different from broker to broker. The amount of assets purchased as well can be a bit different and the minimum step volumes and that kind of thing as well. So that's where you would have to do custom lot multipliers to adjust the settings. Now, as we run down through all of this, to adjust the lot sizing, risk factor is basically going to use the same lot size as the other account and it's going to 
consider the lot sizing compared to the balance here versus the lot sizing compared to the balance on the other account. So in this case, the prop firm challenge. And if it's say 10 times greater, then you're going to have 10 times the volume. If you want to copy the same volume or adjust it based on volume only, not necessarily the account balance or equity, you can use the lot size multiplier. So let's say I want 10 times the volume on this account compared to the master account. I type in 10 and then I remove this use risk factor because what it's going to do is it's going to pick up multiple options here and I believe it might use the top one first. So it's going to ignore all of the other settings. So based on that, I need to remove all the other ones that I don't want and only use the lot size multiplier. For example, for lot sizing the max lots on this account, I want a maximum of 30 lots. Mirror SL and TP changes. So that's the stop loss adjustments and take profit adjustments. I've got that set to true because it's all algorithmic running on EAs on the master account. So I've got that to true so that it manages the entire system. And the benefit of using this trade copier is that I can run all of the systems from one account and just simply run one EA or expert advisor on the slave accounts rather than having the full algorithmic portfolio set up on different accounts. So it makes it a lot easier to simply set up one account and then copy it all over to the receiver based on the custom symbol mappings and the volume that is required. So if I've got the original portfolio set up in a manner that I like in terms of risk management, then I can copy that all over quite easily rather than having to set up up to 10 to 20 EAs and they're all running at the same time. This is just going to pick up the end result and place trades. So it should place a far more reduced pressure on the VPS that I'm running. So this is going to run all the time. It's going to pick up the trades from the algo and it's going to place it on the other account. The great thing about the FX Blue Trade Copier is it's been around for a long, long time. It works quite well. It can be a little slow compared to some systems, but for a free software, if you've got a VPS, it's quite a good way to go. There's obviously setups like social trading platform and dupla trade and all these other systems out there but they can cost money they can have certain limitations and it's much easier just to set it up yourself and you can make a lot more custom adjustments you can adjust the times of day you can set it to buy or sell long only or short only i'm going to set the use original order comments to true because i want to see what trade type it is if I'm not able to access the first account and I've only got access to say the prop firm challenge when I'm out, I wanna be able to see what's going on. If I know the general risk of the algorithmic portfolio, so let's say on one account it risks $200 and I know that I can risk up to say 10,000, I can adjust the lot size accordingly. If I start using risk factor, it's going to start using different elements that I would need to calculate so I like the lot size multiplier because I can simply multiply it out without factoring in the balance and that kind of thing. I know the risk tolerance of the accounts and simply using the lot size multiplier is my favorite option. Max lots, I don't want to go over 30. Obviously I may need to adjust this because Forex versus index may have a very different style or like maximum lots. So for example, I'll often trade the DAX at over 50 lots but Forex, I would rarely ever go over, say, 30. That's an important thing to consider is if the DAX trades aren't coming across or they're coming in at only 30 when I want it to be 50, then that's something I'm going to have to consider. You can set trailing stops and everything, but if your EAs are running how they should, they should have the trailing stops built in, and then this trade receiver will effectively just copy those trades across. There's drawdown stops where it can stop the account trading if it gets below certain equity or percentages. That's great for things like FTMO and other prop firms, but unfortunately you would have to reset this date every time. If it's for today, you would have to jump in, change this balance date for drawdown to today's date, for example, if you want to avoid, say, the daily limits. I'm not sure if that 
is stop trading more trades or if it closes the trades at those points. It's better to probably build in to your EA on the sender side the conditions that you need for your prop firm challenges. So that's just something that comes down to logistics later on. So there's a lot of settings as you can see there. It is definitely worth having a good solid read through the trade copiers online user guide. So the online user guide, I'll go into it now. It shows you all of the different options and thought process behind them. So lot sizing and risk, you can read all about what each one means. It'll give you a lot more detail than this video, but this was just a quick summary to show you how it works. I've tried a range of different trade copiers and FX Blue seems to be the most reliable one for myself so far. Here's all the documentation that you're going to need. I'll pop a link in the description to FX Blue and you can go and check it all out. I'm just going to hit OK on this and you'll see it's connected. It does say waiting for a little bit. These two names, so trade copy and trade copy, they have to be the same. And you can see the last heartbeat. So it basically means they're connected and they're reading each other. You've got some additional information, but you can always tell the trade copier chart because it's covered in the blue area. You won't actually see pricing and everything behind this blue section. An important thing to check is the journal down the bottom in your toolbox or terminal, depending on what platform you're using. And you can see here that it says loaded successfully on both sides. And then also check the experts tab. And you can see that the trade receiver has a lot of information here. Forex symbol suffix auto detected. So that may mean that I didn't actually need to pull away that dot A. What you could do even is, let's say you wanted to trade the AUD USD but then on this account, you wanted to trade in the opposite direction for, say, the pound USD. You could custom symbol map that, so AUDUSD.A to pound USD. And then you could even, say, invert the trading if you wanted to do some sort of a system like that. So always check the experts in the journal tab. You can see here it's found a position on the sender. But I've set it to no sending for currently open trades because, for example, that one's already well in profit. And I don't want to copy it over when it's already heading towards its goal. It's probably going to result in a loss eventually because the entry price is different. If you enjoyed this video or took something positive from it, please hit the like button below. It lets me know this is helping others. To see more great content like this, please subscribe, hit the bell icon and stay updated with the latest.